But Nathan was patient. Hey, that rogue on the way, kid. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, bitch, I'm in the league. You a fan of a team. Okay. And while you hate, I be hunting for the green. Uh -huh. You just chase your screen. Yeah, you go chase a meme. More space for me in the still of all you please. <laughs> I'ma blow the sea, new diamonds on my teeth. Let the pearlies up on me. Hello, friendly listener. You are now tuned in to the Rambling Rogue Show. I am your host, Rambling Rogue, and this is episode 16. You know what I'm saying? Thank you for tuning in. Whether you are listening on YouTube or whether you are listening on SoundCloud, quick round of applause for you, listener. I appreciate any and all of you that are tuning in. You guys, of course, are what make me want to do this. And, you know, even the lack of you guys, because there's not many views on my stuff. You know, there's not there's not too much traffic on my content. But the people that do listen, for the few of you that do, you know, I know that you guys enjoy it. So you guys are who I do it for. You know what I'm saying? What is up? This is the weekend just after 420, so this is 420 weekend or whatever you want to call it. Smoke weed every day. I don't know. Uh, you know what I'm saying? We're here. We're living. We're, we're still doing as we do. We don't have any guests this weekend um, because, you know, guests are hard to come by. But I'm working on it for you guys. You know, I'm working on getting some new people into the podcast so that we can get some new interesting perspectives up. I'm working on, I'll even let you guys know, I'm working on possibly getting an interview with uh, Wet Paint Larry. He's a local artist that I uh, talked about a little bit on my uh, my my vlog and who I've actually just spoken about. And um, I mess with him a lot, you know, because he's a local guy, right? But he doesn't care about any of that. He takes initiative right into his hands and he carves out his own damn future. So forget that local stigma, forget all of that, he's headed places, and I'd love to get a nice little conversation with him before he heads there, to all those places, you know what I'm saying, in his dreams, um, what else, what else, man, you know, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good on this Sunday that I'm recording this, feeling pretty, uh, how am I feeling, I'm feeling, I'm feeling like I'm glad to be here, glad to be alive, yet I'm, you know, feeling the work that needs to be done. I'm not stressed, but I guess you could say pressured or under pressure, under the pressure of that, of the work that needs to be done. Um, speaking of work, I don't know if I've said this on the podcast, so I guess this will be the first time, but um, I'm actually not employed right now. I got terminated from my job. So yeah. We're going through that right now, listener. We're going through what happens when a person loses their job. And, um, you know, I'm going to make a video kind of explaining what happened and just explaining my side of things and explaining um, because it's something that I did to lose my job, you know, of course. And um, whatever. That video will be coming up. It'll be on the channel. You guys will be able to see that when I get all my thoughts together on that, you know, really nice. I'll put that out for you guys. Anyway. Today, I really want to mainly talk about what I experienced yesterday. So that was the 21st of April, and uh, I was at the Cannabis Cup yesterday. Cannabis Cup. Now, listener, the Cannabis Cup is a, uh, it's a show and sort of a vendor, uh, I guess you could say, event where, you know, all sorts of different kinds of people inside of the cannabis industry can come together and they can of course sell their things they can promote their products they can you know mingle they can you know create link build <laughs> you know stuff like that you know that all creators do so of course i attended being the cannabis connoisseur that i am and uh you know i, I also attended last year's and i had an expectation that was pretty high excuse me the Cannabis Cup is put on by High Times, that is like the main premier company in weed. You know, they have their, uh, you know, magazine, they've got like a YouTube page that's super popular, of course, now they've got, you know, all sorts of different activist work done inside of the industry, I'm sure. They're, you know, 
the ones that are always spearheading any like like information that's being put out inside of the cannabis industry they're always the ones that are um you know putting out articles for new science that's you know emerging in the cannabis industry high times are those it, it's that it's that one magnum opus company that everything kind of just falls under you know what i mean it was like after that there's not really much else that could be created in weed it's like it's like they literally do everything that that um that a that a content i guess corporation could do for weed they they do you know news they do videos they do instructions you know they it's, it's literally everything so you know with that being said you would expect that their 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 premier event the cannabis cup would be this epic and grand time and last year i did and i went and i had a ball you know it was that, that epic grand time there were so many vendors there were you know so many opportunities to get free things there were more stages set up so that you could get free things people throwing things off of more stages you know there was this year it was just you know, it, it had everything there, you know, excuse me, they had everything there that I just brought up, but it's just in a, a much smaller quantity, viewer, and I was shaking, shaking, uh, you know, scratching my head, you know, and, and I was, and I was wondering, I was like, man, like, what, what is going on here? Like, what is, what's the deal? And we had actually been talking to a few vendors, my brother and I, because that's who I went with, and uh, we actually ended up figuring out that I guess... That Prop 64, you know, I guess is infringing upon what vendors can do now. And it's making it so that some vendors that they were, that were there weren't even able to actually, you know, sell or even give off any, you know, product because they had, you know, become legal. That's, that's, that's the term that they kept using. I was really confused. I didn't know what was going on, but I know this. It was really dry. And honestly unexpectedly so i thought it was just going to be amazing i i so much so that i spent quite a pretty penny on getting in at the last second too because of course i you know i had the chance to get an early bird ticket but i didn't i didn't you know i ended up paying right at the box office and it was probably double what i was expecting to pay so there was that and then i didn't even come out with much that was free so you know Honestly, high times. Oh, excuse me, listener. Excuse me. Oh, we're tired here today. I don't know what's going on with us. If you're looking on the webcam here or on the YouTube, you know, you'll, you'll see that uh, I don't look bad, I think. But you'll see that I'm not quite the most animate right now. I'm kind of just looking down, kind of trying to get this done. It's because, you know, of course, and I said I'd explain it more, but it's just um, all the other things that are happening this week around the Cannabis Cup. I mean, the Cannabis Cup was supposed to be something that was supposed to bring a little bit of light to my brother and I. But, um, you know, we've been kind of going through it. You know, everybody goes through it. Everybody go through, goes through their, you know, their uh, trials and tribulations, as they say. And everybody has to have those trials. You know, that's what makes life life. You know, you're not on a constant upturn. There's, there's always those valleys. But um, with me losing my job and then with my brother actually having his car stolen, so tragic, he had a Honda, he had a Honda Civic, which I just figured out by way of uh, Watch Mojo is actually the number two, or at least by them, you know, of course. It's the number two most uh, uh, stolen car. You know, they, 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 say, they said it was top 10 stolen cars. And then they had that one as number two. So I don't know if, you know, that one had the most stolen cars or the second most. But, you know, in a ranking for commonly stolen cars, they had my brother's car as number two. He had a 98 Civic and they damn near called out. Yeah, they said 98 Civic in there. So there was that nonsense that we had been dealing with. There was my nonsense. And so the Cannabis Cup was supposed to be something that was supposed to, no pun intended, take us on a higher note and get us off of that, you know, very downtrodden, downbeat, you know, shtick, stink that was kind of all over us. And um, 
sort of succeeded. It had its moments. We did watch all the shows. At least I did. I watched uh, watched Raekwon perform. Raekwon looks good, man. Uh, Raekwon, Chef. You know, Wu-Tang. You know, Klansman. You know, I'm not the biggest Wu-Tang fan. I'm not even a Wu-Tang fan at all. But, you know, I recognize real hip-hop. And uh, that was real hip-hop. That was real. That was real hip-hop. Chef, he tore it down. Um, I didn't get to see Fabulous. I don't know if Fabulous even performed. They were saying that he was going to perform, but I didn't. I did not see Fab. But who I did see, who I did catch in in, in entirety, I I caught a, uh, I caught Wayne show. Lil Wayne performed yesterday, and Lil Wayne's set was better than I expected. Now he was performing a lot of his mixtape cuts. You know, songs that were a little bit more because for me, listener, you got to understand. I don't know how old you are, but I'm only 19 years old. So if you're about my age, you'll probably get this, but maybe not because a lot of people are Wayne fans that are my age. That's a real thing. But for a uh, for a good amount of people that listen to Lil Wayne, they didn't get Lil Wayne's mixtapes. They really didn't. You know, a lot of people stuck to his singles and on the albums and you know if you really went the extra mile and actually listen to wayne's music like his mixtapes and whatnot you got no ceilings you got um you know sorry for the wait you got you know all, all sorts of the dedication series if you were that type of person which i would listen to a little bit of the dedication you know but if you were that type of person you would have really loved this show he was performing songs that People were still reciting the lyrics to, even though he was saying they was mixtape cuts. And I could tell they were mixtape cuts because I didn't know a damn lyric. Because I am a uh, singles to album Wayne listener, to be honest. I, I get Wayne on a very surface level. I think that his very, his music that was meant to be, you know, on a very surface level is his best music. That's, that's just my opinion um, on Lil Wayne. But it was a good show, man. He did this thing. He was jumping around. He was, uh, you know, he was he was very animate. I noticed that he had a snapback on. He had a snapback on, and uh, that was a little weird. That 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 gave me pause. And I thought, you know, I actually have seen Wayne with a hat on. I have, I've had, I have. That's it, not it's not an uncommon thing. But it gave me pause because I remember on the internet. I don't know if this is a real damn picture. I really hope it's not. But this is really gross picture of like Lil Wayne and like. His head. Excuse me. Woo. I don't know why I'm so tired. His head is like down towards the camera. You know, whoever's taking a picture of him. And the guy is like missing all this hair right here. You can't see it if you're obviously on audio only. But if you're looking on the video, he's missing just a fat old patch of hair all right here. And it's all just, it's just beat of beats. Oh, it was not looking right. Not looking right at all, listener. It just wasn't, you know. Uh, and I, I just got off the phone with a, you know, with Prince, my uncle Prince. Y- y'all remember Prince or whatever. I just got off the phone with him, and you know, he was just, you know, laughing about, yeah, man, that's how it is when you in your mid thirties. I was like, man, fuck that. I ain't never trying to go. Old. Oh my goodness, Dude, that it looked bad. Because, you know, Wayne still has the dyed hair. You know, he still has the dyed hair there. So it's like, it's just like, ah, it, it's just like, it's just like, ah, you should just cut it back. I really hope that picture wasn't real, man. That thing was really bad. But, um, yeah, man. Another great thing about the Cannabis Cup were the women, you know. But I, I don't even think that's the Cannabis Cup. I think that's just California, you know. And even then, I mean, it's just there's so many different people. But, oh, my gosh. Lots of beautiful women out there. Sunny California. Sunny San Bernardo. A lot of them working. You know? So that 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 was also something. But lots of beautiful women. I thought I'd just make that remark. Lots of beautiful males too. You know a lot of guys with beards. A lot of dudes that uh you know embody that whole free life that I kinda eh, kinda try to do. You know, as I get older, I think I'll I'll embody that a little more. You know. What else do I want to talk about? Yeah, Cannabis Cup, man. 
2018 high times. Y'all need to fix that one up. I ain't even gonna lie to you. <laughs> Can't even lie to you. What else, man? Um, this week though, coming up, we got a we got a few things coming up. We got a saw baby show on the 25th that we're gonna be heading to. That's saw baby s a h b a b i i. So we probably are gonna do a little reaction to that because that is gonna be a crazy experience. Um, saw baby is an ATL artist, Atlanta artist who emerged last year really but has been making music for a while. And I've already made an episode about him called Saw Baby Talk, where I talked about an interview, a terrible interview that he had with um, Hot 97 that I really didn't like. But uh, basically, man, Saw Baby is this artist who I've been wanting to see since I heard Marsupial Superstars for the first time. That's his single off of his mixtape, Sandas. Now, Sanda stands for suck a nigga dick or something. You know, very flamboyant music. And honestly, I just want to see it performed. So I'm going to be going to the Saw Baby show that he's going to be doing in L.A. on Fairfax on Wednesday. And then on Saturday, I've got, honestly, probably one of the most memorable shows of my life. Because I was really thinking about all the songs that I'm going to be able to hear and all the people that I'm going to be able to see this on Saturday. And I actually started to get really excited. I mean... I'm going to a show where the headliners, it's the Smokers Club 2018. So I've been talking about this. The headliners are Kid Cudi, Mac Miller, you know, Isaiah Rashad, you know, freaking, hold on, hold on. Kid Cudi, Mac Miller, Isaiah Rashad, Flatbush Zombies, whose album was just great, Dom Kennedy, Earl Sweatshirt. I mean, already right there, we were good. We were good at that, like, at that. We were, like, you know what I'm saying? That was good already, like, that. But then you have all these little, like, underground shows, like, these people that I know I'm going to just want to see just off of, like, the music's just going to be lit. You got Dave East. You got the Underachievers, who's like, damn, bro. Shout out to the Third Eye Movement. Because if you don't know, the Third Eye Movement that, you know, with the Beast Coast Movement or whatever you want to call it, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to that because, like, the fact that they could still eat and it's not even in the prime of that anymore and people still digesting that, shout out to that. I just, I love that. And um, another big name that's going to be there, but I'm probably not going to make that show, is uh, Lil Xan. Um, but yeah, man, pretty, pretty crazy lineup. Pretty lit, you know what I'm saying? Oh, Rhapsody. Rhapsody is also going. I, I I did I did get her album, so I'll probably be yeah. A lot of these under under ticket shows are pretty great, but then the like on the top of the card, man. I mean, damn, Cuddy, Mac, Isaiah is shot. It's already over right there. It's already over right there. So that's what I'm gonna be doing Saturday, Wednesday. And besides that, you know, we're going to be looking for a job. You know what I'm saying? We're going to be back on the grind of looking for work. Um, we might even do the ride share experience thing. Ride sharing, you know, Uber, Uber Eats, Postmates, DoorDash, whatever. I can't do Uber or any other, you know, delivery. Or, or not delivery. Uh, any other, uh, how would you say that? Human delivery? I can't do any human delivery, but I can definitely do you know, food delivery. I can't do any cab services. You know what I'm saying? So, because I don't have the car or the age to do so. But, um, I'm considering doing a little bit more of that. Trying to get that stuff under my belt so that, you know, I could just have something to keep myself occupied. It's good money. Postmates, DoorDash. Basically, all they have you do is, um, you know, you go, not door to door, but if you're driving around or whatever, you're based out of a place where it's like popping. Like, they're, they're, uh, service basically you just wait get an order to deliver some stuff to some people you just pick it up deliver it they can tip you if they'd like and if not you still get paid a standard rate you know that's determined by a few different things and that's it you know you use your own car and it's it's pretty convenient but i mean of course you know it's not the most stable thing in the world and it's definitely something that fluctuates as time goes each day you know 
the competition that come up that comes up with each uh, different app the the like a whole bunch of different things affect you know how well you do on those different things so considering doing more of that but right now really honestly i'm looking to get a job at uh probably at a warehouse fedex or something like that i hear is like a, is like a good place to start and um it's what i'm doing it's what i'm doing i'm making more content for you guys as well I'm going to be having a 420 episode of Dreadlock Journey. That's all to itself coming out to you guys. I'm also going to be having the Cannabis Cup vlog that Nigel, my brother, and I uh, did. And then I'm going to be having normal Dreadlock Journey out for you guys. Will I? Or I don't know. I don't, I don't know about that last one. Maybe, maybe not that last one. Maybe that one might be included in the uh, Cannabis Cup vlog. But yeah. Pretty much, that's what we've got planned. I mean, it's it's going to be kind of a busy little week this week. Besides that, you know, for the rest of the, I, not even the month, because the rest of the week is the rest of the month, really. But for May, we have the uh, debut of our mixtape, the Linda EP um, planned. So we're going to be doing some more things, of course, in developing it. And I don't even know. Shoot. Who knows? May may not even be the time. We might push it back, add some more songs, and and who knows. But hey, I'm 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 trying my best with the content that I'm creating. And I'm really enjoying how my mind is kind of like forming and and coming to grips with all the different artistic influences that it can take in. You know, and it's while sometimes frustrating and while sometimes a little bit scary and while sometimes a little bit even overwhelming, you know, this creator path that I'm on, it's it's one that's so interesting. I mean, connecting with others that are on this path as well, I think, is is something that I've taken and, and cherished a lot. It's because it's like everybody has their own perspective, but we all seem to speak the same language, the same underlying, you know, uh, I guess sense of familiarity in that we all just want to be something or somebody recognized for our work and or not all i've spoken to some artists that you know of course they have much less vanity to no vanity in the, in the matter and they and they and they have a different approach to it but even still with those artists i find that this same idea of wanting to be efficient and wanting to be a person that's always there and is, and that is, I guess, relied on for a specific thing or specific kind of art, relied on for a specific video, relied on for specific kind of content. I think that lies there. And it's that desire that pushes these people like myself to do this, even when we get zero views, one view, two views, whatever, you know? So again, I just want to say shout out to you for listening on SoundCloud and, um, yeah, just thanks for watching me grow and become more of an artist and a different artist and all of those different things. If you're a person out there that wants to pursue your own type of artistry, do it. You don't have to make it your life, but I definitely say do it, you know, make it something that you do on your, your spare time. A hobby is great, you know. I don't know about any like a lot, all other millennials, but I feel like the people that are around me, the young people around me. A lot of them really do look down on on having, you know, hobbies and having things that they do that that are not in the norm that they do with the free time. You know, there are hobbies that are accepted and there's hobbies that, you know, even just hobbies as a general thing, you know, that are just not. And it is just not like I'll give you an example. It's like a person could really be cool at video games and that's cool right now. That's fun, you know. But then another hobby for that that person could be something that they do with their voice, you know, messing like I was at the Cannabis Cup and I, I was looking at a hobbyist and this guy's hobby, his his hobby is literally getting his keyboard, getting his little beat machine and just affecting his voice. You know, that like 80s, 90s effect on your voice or maybe even 70s. I, I don't I don't know the exact effect that you would do, but it's like it makes you sound like this and there's that one song that's like it's like oh, wow. oh, yeah. like you know it, it just it just makes your voice sound all distorted and and funky and weird 
And, um, you know, it's, it's just a guy who, who had his machines and he was just out playing music for people. And that was it. That's it. There's no money involved. There's no nothing. It's just that. But a lot of people look down on that. They look down on that passion that would have you do something like that. They look down on it, you know, sometimes because it doesn't have a monetary gain or sometimes just because they feel like it has no value at all. And I think I'm a little bit guilty of that, that first thing where I can kind of judge something for not having monetary gain, but I'm learning to just not do that, man. It's just, everybody has their own thing to do. Everybody has their own calling. Everybody has their own, you know, unique path that, hey, there are down moments that just don't have anything to do with anything in that. And I think that's the beauty in a hobby. It just encapsulates that, that that free time of being just free, just that, you know? I don't know, I'm rambling. But I guess that's what it is, right? The Rambling Rogue. Thank you for listening. Um, hold on. Let me look at. Let me. Look, ooh, let me look at my little list here. Let's see if I forgot anything. Anything I actually wanted to talk about. We talked about the Smokers Club. We talked about the Cannabis Cup. We talked about upcoming content. And no, this that's pretty much it. I I don't want to leave you guys, but I I'm fortunately going to. I want to vent for a little more. Oh, Crush Chronicles. Let's talk about that. Um, my crush is a 21-year-old misanthrope. Now, the reason why I use the word misanthrope is because I just learned it yesterday. And it's because... And if you're watching this, please let me know. Let me know in whatever comment section or whatever, whatever way you can. Is it creepy for me to be looking at this girl's Instagram and Twitter? And yeah, is, is that creepy for me to do that without following her? I mean, she's public on those things, so I don't have to follow her to see her stuff. But is that creepy of me to just watch her public Instagram without following? Because I have her number. Right. And then I was also able to get her Instagram and Twitter through a friend. I just didn't feel the need or I just I just never felt like how do I even go about following? Like, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like, okay, now you follow. And what? Well, how did you even get my Instagram? You know, then I have to go explain that. And then that's just like it's not the most savory story. I mean, it's literally just I just got it, you know. Maybe I'm overthinking it. I mean, I guess now that I say that out loud, it actually doesn't even sound that bad. Just doing that. Huh. But then again, I have been kind of following it for like a few weeks, you know? Like, I have not followed her in all the time that, that I've known her, right? So it's like, yeah. Maybe I should follow her or maybe not. Because as it stands right now, our, our current status right now is just literally, I walk in talk and, and then leave but I mean sit, like I said on the last week her boss is now kind of cracking down on it where it's like not that he's kicked me out but you know he kind of expressed to her that hey you know if he keeps coming back and if he's here just you know waiting around you know just he's not supposed to do that or whatever so with that being said it's kind of been difficult for me to even find an opening to kind of go in because it's like I know she doesn't mind but it's like, you know, and it's, and I don't really, and I'm not caring too much about the boss and his business. I'm just, I don't want to have the whole scene of that one time that he comes in and I'm there and then I get kicked out. And now it's like, you know, now I really can't go in. Now it's not even that like, you know, I'm trying to be cautious. It's literally, I can't like, and the sucky thing about it is that's worse is I'm actually a customer. Like technically speaking, I don't actually buy any of this stuff. And I hold it for probably way longer than uh than I should. You know, but I'm getting I'm getting movies from there due because of my crush. So I, I should be treated better, right? Like I should be treated like with some respect. But who knows? <laughs> I'm just joking. No, no, I'm I'm totally bottom feeding off of that whole place. I'm literally losing them money. Um, yeah. But I wanna see my crush. So I don't know. Who knows? I think it's like four-ish right now. She gets off at like five-ish. I've got one of their movies. But I don't know when I'm going to return it, man. 
I just don't know. I mean, not only do I not have the time, but I'm also just trying to go in when she, when I know she's there. And it's like literally only Thursday in the weekend. So it's like, you know, I always, I, I don't know. <sighs> That's where it's at with my crush. It's like, I can't go in, but at the same time, I want to go in. And at the same time, I feel like, you know, with all of that, Maybe what she said before about her not being interested was true. But then it's like, you could have blocked my number. You didn't have to text me that back. So, I don't know. Right now, just to kind of troll her, even though I'm pretty sure that, I, that I'm that i on Do Not Disturb on her phone. But just to kind of troll, because she doesn't answer anything. I've literally just resorted to just throwing in messages of all sorts. So I've called her message, like her chat, a thought hole, where I literally just empty out thoughts. I'll literally just put in random pictures of anything from the internet or just from that I take. I'll put in random thoughts. I'll just put just poems, songs, you know, like I'll just send her songs. Like I'll just literally just send her the randomest songs. I'll send her TED, TED Talks. I'll send her, I'll just send her a bunch of stuff. Like anything that I feel like I'm thinking about and maybe I want to put more thought into, I literally use her messages as a second notes for, for my phone. So, um, yeah, that's where we're at, man. And as unfortunate as that is, as you know, as much, because it sucks because it's like, literally when we, when we get together, when we talk, we could have two to three hour long conversations where we both don't even notice how long it's been. And, and that's easy, but texting it's a whole different thing and when i tried to call her shit doesn't work she literally fucking hung up so i don't know how, how disrespectful this girl wants to be while also being very you know kind and respectful and then flirtatious back but that that's where that is and yeah i'm really rambling at this point this is the essence of this show thank you again for tuning in That's it for me.